no robot can act the way a human does yet. There are no R2-D2s, there are no C-3PO's yet. The crux of the biscuit of this kind of thing, I think, is that you must have people that are able to flow just like in a jazz band. Only our jazz is the jazz of computers and robots and mechatronics. This is a genuine first in robotics technology, a real foray into the unknown. Most of us got our first glimpse of them in the movies. Beings that look vaguely human, but were really machines. Now this is uh, no offense, but you are a robot, aren't you? That is correct, sir. For your convenience, I am monitored to respond to the name Robbie. If the science fiction writers were right, robots were going to be part of our future, serving us in ways we could only guess at. Now that future is upon us, and so are the robots but they're not like anything we imagine. The people who built it call it Ambler. A decade or so from now, a machine very much like it may be exploring the rocky surface of Mars. But first, Ambler has to learn the basics, one step at a time. This is like teaching a baby to walk, and before it gets to that million critical steps on another planet, there'll be tens of millions here on Earth. For now, most of those steps are confined to a converted warehouse at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. It's part of the Field Robotics Center and is home to a wildly diverse team of scientists, engineers, and computer hackers who are busy building the machines of the future. Red Whitaker, director. FRC is a mix of everything it takes to build a robot. Someone who can cut 20,000 lines of clean software may or may not be the same person to bolt up two tons of iron. So under one roof, there's uh, young and they're old, and there's the bald and the hairy. And it's not just that they can work together, people do. In a shop where circuits and steel must be merged together, Mac McDonald is the electronics guru. I have a lifetime of tinkering, inventing, 11th hour redesigning, and I bring that here as kind of the link between the theoretical world and the real world and the outside world of actually building a bridge rather than extrapolating on the mathematics behind a bridge. Is he qualified on that tool? Is he checked out? Well, we gave him a rubber hammer. Any, too. Yeah, anything with a handle was a hammer to it. <laughs> All tools basically evolved from the hammer. Therefore, you can use any tool as a hammer, and it'll work fine. But if all you have is a hammer, then you tend to approach every problem as though it were a nail. <laughs> but the problem these researchers face isn't a nail, and it can't be solved with a hammer. It's figuring out how to make a machine that can think. A robot that not only puts one foot in front of the others, but actually decides what path to take. Despite Hollywood illusions, the very idea of an autonomous problem-solving machine is truly revolutionary. In an age when technology usually strives to make machines as small as possible, Ambler is a giant. Built to explore unmapped planets, the 19-foot robot can step over large boulders and avoid trenches that a smaller machine couldn't negotiate. All six legs move independently, and sensors on the base of each foot tell Ambler what kind of surface it's stepping on. But learning how to walk is a lot harder for a young machine than it is for a human child. For the first eight months of his life, he was not doing anything, and Ambler wasn't doing anything. and then. He started crawling, and the ambler started crawling along, and he started walking, and a month later, the ambler started walking, and uh, maybe next year, they'll both be running outside together in the playground. I don't know. 
One of the things that really struck me was that we have this whole team putting the robot together and getting it to walk. And basically, just by himself, you know, he, he learned to walk. And it's really quite amazing what uh, a head start evolution gives you over uh, what engineering knows right now. State-of-the-art engineering has provided Ambler with a kind of electronic vision. A laser scanner takes a three-dimensional picture of the landscape and translates it into a computerized map of the terrain. Ambler chooses a route with meticulous precision. Tens of thousands of computations are necessary before even one leg begins to lift. Each step requires about 90 seconds of thought. But sometimes even Ambler's creators don't know what it's thinking. Oh, geez. Oh, stop geez. it, stop it, stop it. Okay. Smooth. That was really smooth. <laughs> I fire up that process and then we'll be able to keep going. Wait, wait, don't let it send any, it's sending, it's sending commands, this is bad. No problem, I'll do it anyway, he's dead. Uh, yeah, well, it's not going any farther because the gate planner has uh, been unable to figure out the next step it should take. Here's the leg, that's the Cartesian. Oh, you know what the problem is? No, you're screwed. Every step is an experiment. Every step is an adventure. A lot of things can go wrong. A lot of things do go wrong on every trial. The key is that our software and our ideas have to be rugged enough to withstand the small mistakes. This is unique for robotics technology, but in principle, not so different than first flight by the Wright brothers until they flew. There was no sense of what to do, or how to do it. The principles and the abstractions were as obscure to them as first autonomous walking is to these researchers. And what Kitty Hawk was to flight, a place called Three Mile Island was to robotics. The 1979 reactor accident provided the FRC robots with a baptism by fire. Three Mile Island had everything you could throw at a robot problem. That called for a robot machine that could get through the airlocks, down through the passages, into the basement where there was water, there was mud, there was fire damage, and a need to explore, bring back samples, and ultimately to clean the place up. Operated by remote control, the FRC robots transmitted the first images from the contaminated area, something that humans could never see with their own eyes. With the world watching, Red and his team proved that robots could begin to step where people feared to tread. Now the robot shop is facing its latest challenge. In less than 12 hours, Ambler must prove itself in front of a skeptical audience from NASA. But first, the robot must perform a last minute practice run. Ambler's safety net, a heavy duty crane, is unhooked. The two and a half ton creature is on its own. Ready when you are. Steve, we're going. This is the fun part. This is the last minute of preparations. And everything's still running properly. We've got a couple of bugs in code. I think they'll work that out. At this point, we just leave them alone. Let them do their thing. It's in capable hands. The dress rehearsal goes without a hitch. 
and Ambler is lifted back to the starting line, ready for tomorrow's big test. What's aboard tomorrow is the top of NASA's community in unmanned exploration, many of whom have been supporters and many of them naysayers about walking. And in the end, we send it out in the world because uh, uh, it's the Ambler that'll do the uh, talking for itself tomorrow. Uh, that means we've got to be ready to go on our first trial run at 7 o'clock, which means that Henning's going to be here at 6 in the morning, Regis and others at 6.30, Steve and John at 7, everyone else at 7, if not before. So, see you tomorrow morning. has a lot at stake. If Ambler stumbles, seizes up, <clears throat> or actually falls over, it will be a disaster. I feel like an expected father right now, waiting for the baby to arrive. Yeah, Good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you. Oh, crap. Last time I was here, you did not have the power on board. Where you come down, and then you blow the engine off from under it. Since I, my, my plane, they don't come back. So I noticed from the screen, uh, what's what's the verdict? The, the test is about to begin. Ambler has to take just 27 steps, but it must do so flawlessly. Take it up, Henning. This is like first ascent of an unclimbed mountain, where when you embark, you don't really know whether it's a doable deed. You don't really know whether it's an achievable end. It distinguishes sort of the character of genuine research, where there is no comfort, no warmth, no sense of how to get to the other side. The pace of robotics research is fast, and the half-life of the technology might be a year. In a five-year or ten-year time frame, what looked impossible became possible, and what becomes possible becomes accepted and commonplace. They've changed minds at NASA. Three years ago, I'd say there were people who were doing mission designs and mission profiles who would never, ever have considered even the possibility of a walking vehicle. There were a lot of subtleties. The machine has certain programmed advantages. This is different. This can do things that nothing else can do. The Ambler is more than just some technological gymnastics. This is a set of ideas that really work and refined to the next generation it's ready to traverse the Mojave Desert or to cross Antarctica, and the next step is Mars.